valvular heart diseases too outline mitral regurgitation tricuspid stenosis tricuspid regurgitation abstain anomaly aortic stenosis mitral regurgitation m mode lv level the left ventricle is dilated and hyperkinetic due to volume overload of lv the amplitude of motion of the iv septum and lv posterior wall is exaggerated in mr due to valvular disease 2d echo plaques view the left atrium is dilated and shows systolic expansion there is an increase in the la posterior wall motion m mode mv level mitral valve leaflets show exaggerated excursion and quick mv closure due to rapid diastolic filling accordingly the de excursion of the aml is increased and the ef slope is steep there may be features of the underlying cause of mr such as mv prolapse or flail mv leaflet m mode lv dimensions the left ventricular dimensions in end diastole and systole are increased if mitral regurgitation is due to annular stretching functional mr left ventricular systolic function is impaired there may be eccentric lv hypertrophy which is inadequate for the degree of lv dilatation with an increased lv mass m mode av level since a fraction of the stroke volume regurgitates into the left atrium there is mid systolic closure of the aortic valve color flow mapping a regurgitant jet is seen in the left atrium on plaques view and a4ch view the extent to which the mr jet fills the la cavity indicates the severity of mr a turbulent jet with a swirling movement can cause systolic flow reversal in the pulmonary veins this retrograde flow along with normal venous inflow sometimes gives a variance color map doppler echo on cw doppler scanning of the entire left atrium from the a4ch view can detect the mr jet at any angle severity of mr is more closely related to the density or intensity of the flow signal a dense or intense signal indicates greater volume moving at high velocity by cw doppler the pulmonary artery pressure can be estimated on pw doppler with the sample volume in a pulmonary vein retrograde systolic flow may be detected tricuspid stenosis m mode and 2d echo features thickened leaflets with or without calcification causing multiple reverberation echoes limited excursion of leaflets with restricted valve opening and slow diastolic closure flat ef slope diastolic doming of anterior tricuspid leaflet with paradoxical anterior motion of septal leaflet doppler echo on pw doppler the tv inflow spectral trace shows an increased peak diastolic flow velocity exceeding 0.5 meter per second tricuspid regurgitation 2d echo ap4ch view the right ventricle is dilated and hyperkinetic due to volume overload it is of same size as or larger than left vertical when enlarged the right ventricle becomes globular and loses its normal triangular shape the right atrium is dilated and shows systolic expansion with bulging of interatrial septum towards left atrium 2d echo sc4ch view the dilated right ventricle and right atrium can also be visualized from the subcostal four chamber view 2d echo plaques view the septum moves away from the left ventricle and towards the right ventricle in systole 
there is increased amplitude of motion of the RV free wall. On M mode scan at this level, there is exaggerated leaflet excursion and early diastolic closure due to rapid diastolic filling. 2D echo PSAX view. The tricuspid valve can also be visualized from the short axis view at the aortic valve level. It may reveal the underlying cause of TR such as rheumatic thickening, leaflet prolapse, flail leaflet, valve vegetations. Color flow mapping. In systole, a mosaic colored regurgitant jet is seen in the right atrium, RA, along with interatrial septum. The width of the TR jet correlates with the degree of regurgitation. A broad color flow signal represents severe TR. On CW Doppler, scanning of the entire right atrium from the A4CH view can detect the TR jet. A flow profile of high velocity with quick acceleration and rapid deceleration is an indicator of severe TR. On PW Doppler, mapping progressively deeper into the right atrium, RA, till flow is not seen, can quantify the severity of TR. On PW Doppler, with the sample volume in the inferior vena cava, retrograde systolic flow may be detected. Epstein Anomaly 2D Echo A4CH View There is downward displacement of the tricuspid valve into the body of the right ventricle. The septal TV leaflet is attached to the IV septum 10 mm or more inferior to the anterior mitral leaflet. The anterior tricuspid leaflet is large and shows wide excursion with a whip-like motion. The right ventricle is small because its upper portion lies above the downward displaced tricuspid valve. M mode MV level Closure of the TV is delayed and occurs more than 60 milliseconds after the MV closure. 2D echo PSAX view Due to inferior displacement of the TV, it is shifted clockwise from the normal 9 o'clock position to 11 o'clock. Doppler echo. Pulse wave Doppler and color flow mapping can access the hemodynamic effects of tricuspid regurgitation and quantify the shunt across the atrial septum defect. Aortic stenosis. 2D echo plaques view. In valvular AS, the aortic valve leaflets are thickened due to fibrosis with or without calcification. In rheumatic AS, the process starts in the leaflets without fusion of commissures, followed by secondary calcification of the leaflets and annulus. In calcific AS, the process starts with calcification of the annulus and progresses medially to involve the valve leaflets. In bicuspid aortic valve, calcification is observed only in the late stages of the disease. There is reduced excursion of aortic leaflets with restricted opening of the aortic valve. Due to fusion at the leaflet tips and free motion of the leaflet bodies, there is systolic doming. This is a characteristic feature of rheumatic AS. In valvular AS, there is post-stenotic dilatation of the proximal aorta or aortic root. In supravalvular AS, a thin linear echo, discrete membrane, extends inwards from the aortic wall. With an hourglass AS, there is a gradual decrease in aortic root diameter during above downwards angulation of the transducer. In membranous subaortic AS, there is a linear echo in the LV outflow tract between the IV symptom and the AML of the mitral valve. The linear echo is proximal and parallel to the aortic valve, sometimes with a T artifact at its free edge. In tunnel type subaortic AS, the left ventricular outflow tract is narrower than the aortic root. In long standing AS, 
there is often left ventricular hypertrophy LVH due to left ventricular pressure overload there is thickening of the IV septum and LV posterior wall which exceeds 12 mm 2D echo PSAX view on short axis view at aortic valve level there is leaflet thickening reduced excursion and a small AV lumen a bicuspid valve can be identified from this view M mode AV level normally on M mode scan from PLAX view at the aortic valve level the aortic cusps from a central closure line is diastole in systole they open to form a box like opening or parallelogram shape in AS the closure line and the box like opening are replaced by multiple thick dense echoes in the aortic root throughout the cardiac cycle due to restricted leaflet excursion the size of the box like opening of the AV is reduced to less than 15 mm Doppler echo the normal peak aortic systolic outflow velocity ranges from 0.9 to 1.8 meter per second with a mean of 1.3 meter per second in AS the velocity exceeds 2 meter per second the peak velocity is obtained below or above the aortic valve level in subvalvular and supravalvular AS respectively indications for intervention in AS a stenotic aortic valve needs to be replaced by a prosthetic valve in the following situations a severe AS PG greater than 64 millimeter HG AV area less than 0.75 cm square B moderate AS but with symptoms angina or syncope C moderate AS without symptoms but high activity level D moderate AS with other cardiac surgery example CABG E moderate to severe AS with LV systolic dysfunction.